Hi, welcome to the Creative Treehouse. My name is Robin Broom, and I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the United States. I am so glad you joined me in the treehouse today. This is our project today, and I, you could probably use it for something other than a card. Um, I have mine just on the early espresso, and so you could do a number of things with it. But I'll just show you what how I did it and you can choose to change it up or do however you would like. This I'm calling is a watercolor landscape using stamps. And this is my second attempt. I did another one with a girl and this one is with a daddy and daughter, which would be probably perfect for Father's Day that's coming up. So let me show you how I did it. First, let me tell you the dimensions. I used Whisper White, and the Whisper White is cut at 5 and 3 sixteenths by 3 and 15 sixteenths, which is a mouthful, and it might be easier just to, to know that it is one little tick mark below 4 inches and one little tick mark below the 5 and a quarter inches. So, and then the Old Olive is your next mat, and it is an eighth of an inch bigger than the Whisper White. And then you have your Early Espresso, which is cut at the traditional five and a half by four and a quarter, or your eight and a half by 11 uh, scored in half. All right, so let's get out that Whisper White page. The pre-cut and ready to go. And let me show you the stamp sets that I used, utilized to, to create this. And the first one is the A Good Man. And I used just this one right here with the, the daddy and the daughter. I also used A Friend Like You. And I used the two grasses. And I also used this stamp as well. And then I used Waterfront, which is just a very versatile stamp set. Use a bunch of different ones from this one. And snow front, I just, I had to use it for the tree. This particular tree was just the right size tree for this project. And then the My Meadow, not last but not least. And there's several in, in here that I used for water and grass and leaves for the tree. So those are the stamp sets. And we will start out with Soft Suede. And let's get a scratch pad underneath so we don't mess up our work surface. Okay, and then our the daddy-daughter stamp set the little and we're gonna I'm gonna put it just slightly off to the right. It takes up quite a bit of real estate the uh, as far as top to bottom there. All right, we're gonna close up soft suede, but we may revisit the soft suede in just a little while. All right, the next thing we need to do is get our mask on. And the mask, I created out of a, a sticky note or a, a post-it note. And I was gonna see if I could show you how I how I created it. But the, the man is just a, a tad bit longer, taller than the post-it note. So I put an additional post-it note down. So I laid the post-it note down and I traced around the man with a pen because you can see through the post-it note to see the stamped image below. Then I cut around the trace lines, just actually inside the trace lines because you want the ink to be able to get up as close to, as possible to your stamped image there. So now that he's masked, we can start our landscape. And the next thing that we'll need to do is put a the paper piercing mat up under because all the rest of the stamps that we're gonna be using today are photopolymer and they don't have the squishy. So this provides the squishy that we need. You like those technical terms? <laughs> All right, and now we're gonna do the mountain first and the mountain is going to be stamped with the basic gray. So we've got our basic gray and then we have our mountain stamp. And we're going to put, I put it just to, I, I personally just start to the right and I make my mountain top just a slight bit shorter than the man's head, but you can you can put it wherever you want. And then I'm gonna double this one over just a little bit, overlap it, 
Now we've got our mountains. The basic gray, that's the only time we're gonna use the basic gray on our project today, so we can slide him out of the way. All right next, we're gonna move down and we're gonna use Mossy Meadow next. And we're gonna use the stamps that looks like this. It's kind of a, a long, skinny stamp. And we're gonna put it right at the base of our mountain, kind of overlapping just a little bit on the gray and both sides I'm gonna do one more it has a, like a curvature to it so all right that looks pretty good now we will change and we're gonna go one shade lighter we're gonna go to our old olive next and do the exact same stamp Just moving down one, and I just got some ink on the edge. I tend to, for some reason, I rock this stamp set more than any other stamp set, so I'm not, I'm not sure why. So I have to try to be observant and make sure. Okay, there, your old olive on either side. Great, and now we're gonna use the same stamp once again, but we're gonna trade and we're gonna to move to Pool Party. Because in my imagination, I kind of think that the next is water after the grass that we've started our lake or whatever it is. So I'm gonna clean it off and we're gonna to move to Pool Party for our water. And we're gonna overlap again, moving on for the darker part of the water. I'm gonna go through and kind of fill in that hole just a little bit. Great, all right, I think we're probably done with that stamp set. We're definitely done with a pool party. We can close that up and move it out of the way. Now we're gonna to move to Balmy Blue and we're gonna start the rest of our water. And I think the stamp set, I think this one we'll use for the water. You can actually use just a a wide variety. All right, and we'll just stamp there with the balmy blue. And again, overlapping a little bit with the, the pool party and, and actually each other, which kind of gives it a, just the like water in motion that it's not completely stagnant. The wind could be going by stirring up the water. Just kind of use your imagination. All right, so now we pretty much have the water done. So we can close up the balmy blue for right now. Actually, while we have it out, I think what we might do is go ahead and do the, while we have the balmy blue out, go ahead and do the sky, make some clouds. And I'm going to stamp off and give it a cloud. And I'm going to come over here, stamp off over here, and one more cloud-like object. And now we can close up the balmy blue. We might be finished with it, I'm not positive. Okay, now moving on down, it's time for some land. Amanda is going to stand on some land, and I think it's just totally appropriate for it to be Sahara sand, because I, he's probably like on a sandy seashore. All right, we're going to use this stamp set to get the sandy seashore. Sandy shore. <laughs> oh, it's almost a tongue twister. Okay, I'm gonna put one here. And then another one right here. We'll try to go all the way over here to the edge. And if we've missed a spot in the corner, it's pretty much gonna be covered up with greenery, but we'll go ahead and do that. Well, it looks Looks pretty good. I'm gonna do one more, just a little bit higher up. All right, that looks nice. Now we're going to, wait, we're gonna, I was about to say, close up the Sahara sand, but let's put some dots. We've got the stamps that has little dots on it, and we're gonna put little dots in our sand. It just kind of gives the sand some dimension. All right, now we can close up our Sahara sand. And we need a little more greenery right here, so let's take our old olive again. And, oh, 
let's see, which one should we do the greenery? I think this one would be good for the greenery. This stamp, and we'll come in here with some there. So there's some land, a land mass over here on the side. That's kind of coming across. That looks great. All right, Ooh, and now we are going to temporarily close up the old olive, and we're gonna to move to early espresso because we need our tree base. So the early espresso and our tree. Our tree, I believe, is the only one that we used out of the snow front set. And we're gonna put it pretty high up. Make sure I didn't have any ink, okay. And just to the right, so the tree trunk is just to the right of the edge there. Now we've got our tree. And I think that's the only time we need the early espresso. So we'll close it up. Now let's give our tree some leaves. We'll start with the old olive and we'll use the little dots. I think they came out of the My Meadow set. And we'll give leaves to our tree. Just kind of making sure that every branch has some leaves on it. I'm gonna be sure this is a, this must be a, a good healthy tree, you know. Has lots of great leaves, okay. Now we're going to change and we're going to actually go lighter. We're going to go with pear pizzazz and do the same thing. Some more leaves. And to me, the leaves on the end would be the ones that would be, would be lighter. The sun may be hitting them. All right, and we're going to do another one. We're going to move to Mossy Meadow. So we're going to have three different greens in our tree. Now the mossy meadow is the darkest, and so it's kind of in the in interior of the tree, where it's a little denser. So then we've got that. And then sometimes I even like to add just a tiny bit of yellow, the daffodil delight, but I'm gonna wipe, wipe off my, clean off my stamp with the, the Simply Chamois and I'm gonna do the yellow, but I'm gonna stamp it off because we don't want yellow shouting at us. We just need to be just a tiny bit in here. Just a tiny bit more added dimension. All right, there we go. And that's the only time we'll use the yellow. So close it up. And now we're gonna go back to our greens and we're gonna use, start with our old olive again and we're gonna go to the greenery to all of our grasses down at the bottom. And we're gonna start with this particular stamp. I really like this one. And we're gonna put one here. And we're gonna put one over here on the other side of the, the daddy and his daughter. And put one right there. Okay, and then we're gonna do one or two with the pear pizzazz. Same one, just a little bit lighter. Again, you're just kind of giving it dimension. And then while we have, go back to our old olive and we're gonna try change and trade grasses for this one that's just kind of like, um, it actually comes with cattails. All right, that looks good, and I'm going to go and change, I think now, to the Mossy Meadow. So we're gonna be using three greens in the grasses. And let's go, I'm gonna go back to this one and give one here, a dark one here. And I'm gonna give a dark one just on the edge. Let me wipe, wipe off my stamp, make sure I don't have any, and we don't want a, any green in here where it doesn't belong, otherwise it may look like there's the we have a Loch, Loch Ness monster in our <laughs> in our lake back there. <laughs> All right, I think. Let's see. Well, let me. I'm going to change and do one dark of the the cattail grass. Okay, I'm going to do one more down below because this one, that one, is a short grass. Okay. And then I think our greens are finished. We want to move over, and we're going to do the. It's it's kind of like the little cattails. It's some type of blossoms that are on 
a few of these and I'm going to only use the two long ones and to, in order to do that I'm going to reach and I'm going to only tap just those two on the corner of the ink pad okay and then I'm going to decide where I would like these stems to be with the little flowery things and I'm going to do it again a couple of times I'm going to move over here decide where where I would where I would like them the best okay and then two on this side all right very nice and then a, a kind of a almost a silly silly little detail I took a Stampin' Write marker in early espresso and I just added just a couple of little dots to these little uh, like almost little fuzzy things all right all right I see that I got a teeny tiny bit of ink right there so I'm trying to decide what I would like to do to cover that up what would be the easiest and I think what I'll do is I will take this ink again and I'll take the or this stamp again I'll take this ink and I'll see if I can kind of cover it up because I, I obviously I went a little bit too far on that let's see if I can cover it up with this one a little bit yeah a little bit okay now what else do we need to do do we have all of that done I think so they think the only thing we need to do now is take off the mask and we get to color and when we take it off we notice that there's little bits of maybe too much white but we can take our Stampin' Blends and this particular one is the dark crumb cake and we can take it and we can take the and just fill in just a little bit like around his shoes and his pants just a little bit not not the whole thing don't want to draw attention to it and that looks good and we'll do the same thing with the green we'll take the light old olive and we'll go right over here on the edge next to his shirt all right looks good okay the next thing I usually do is I start with the flesh and I use the ivory color so we're going to do his neck we'll do the little girl's arm and we'll do the man's arm and then she has a foot she doesn't have any shoes on she's barefoot isn't that sweet that's just neat okay I like that oh wait and she also right here I think that her shirt is kind of short and the way she's reaching up it's showing a little bit of her back right there all right now let's go to dad's hair and we're going to use the Stampin' Blend. We're going to use the Light Soft Suede. And we will color in his hair. And then we can take the darker Soft Suede and give it just a little bit more, a little more dimension to it. All right, and then the little girl, I gave her Daffodil Delight. I gave her two different Daffodil Delights. The light and the dark, mostly dark. And there. And her little girl hair. And then we'll add the light Daffodil Delight to it. All right, moving down, we'll do the guy's, the daddy's shirt. And I, I chose the, the light old olive for his shirt. Some of my favorite colors are blues and greens, and that may be why I chose those for his outfit. But you can choose whichever ones that you like. I also thought it was a little bit maybe more masculine colors. And like with the little girl, lots of little girls like pink and purple, so I chose those colors for her. All right, and then what you can do to kind of blend, go back over places that where a shadow might be. I found this on the web. My computer's trying to help me. Did you hear that? <laughs> I must need some help. All right, and then for the little girl's shirt, I ended up doing the Light Lovely Lipstick is the color that I chose. 
for her shirt. I had done a lighter one, I just thought it was a little bit too light. Okay, and then for her pants, I ended up choosing, I think it was, let's see, yes, the Light Rich Razzleberry, the Stampin' Blim, and made her some purple pants. And again, on any of these, you can use the light and the dark and blend them, and you can also just use just the one, whichever you've chosen, and go through it as well and blend it. All right, and then the man's pants, I used the light night of navy for his pants. And then a lot of times what I'll do is I'll use the, the very thin end to go through tight areas, like I really want to be careful and not turn her foot blue because I, I don't believe she's cold. So it looks like it's a nice summer day. So I'll sometimes go around the outline with the thin and then color it in with the brush tip the rest of the way. I enjoy coloring and I really, really enjoy the Stampin' Blends. I think it can make anybody do a great job of coloring. No, no pin lines, just so smooth. All right, and then I'll go back with the, the thin tip again, and I'll go through and kind of cover back over some of the dark lines or the different places that you think there's a shadow. Like places where the, the pants maybe were creased. Maybe the bottoms have some shadow to them. All right, then we'll get his shoes, and his shoes are going to be the dark, soft suede Stampin' Blend, which will be pretty much the same color as the original stamp there. All right, are we getting close? Are we missing anything? I think we may have it. Let me set him down, and let's get out our original, and we can kind of compare those and see which one, if there's anything missing. Do they look very similar? I think they do, they look very similar. I think we did it. So great, thanks for watching. I hope that you maybe gained a new tip or something that would be helpful and I hope I've inspired you to try this particular project or maybe something similar and uh, just happy stamping. And thank you so much for joining me in the Creative Treehouse and I'll see you next time where we will do another project and your guess is as good as mine is what it's gonna be because I don't know if I can keep watercoloring but it'll be something because I, enjoy, I so enjoy doing this and I enjoy sharing it with you. Thank you guys. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.